Hello, welcome to the Courageous Self Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, we talk about self care that is simple to implement and that has dramatic results. And it's well, I'm not teaching you how to go out and book pedicures and get massages and that kind of thing, although those are fantastic self care solutions. And at the same time, they're kind of band aid fixes. So if you those are your go to, or I like to say self care beyond bubble bath, chocolates, and wine, if those are your go-to. They are band-aid solutions, and there's so much more you can do with self-care. Over the last few years, I've developed 12 courageous self-care skill sets. And when you learn these skill sets and learn to implement them, you go from maybe not having any self-care at all or just dabbling in it to self-care becoming who you are, and you don't have to work at it so hard and think about it as much because it's in your essence. For self-care to be useful and practical, if it's if you're not at the place where it's part of who you are, then it's useful to have a guide. So here I am. And I also love to have other guides whose work and lifestyle aligns with courageous self-care. So today I have a guest with me, Stacy Westman. Stacy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So glad that you're here. So Stacy, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you love to do. I am a mom of 16 years almost, and a wife of 22 this year. And my passion is food, getting people to eat food, helping my children discover food, making sure people know that they don't have to exist on fast food is sort of my mission and my passion in life. Mm. I thought you were going to say 16 kids. (laughs) No, I could never ever do that. (laughs) When you said 16 years, that that was prepared to be wowed. <laughs> but 16 years is amazing. 22 years of marriage is amazing. And uh, yes, our relationship with food is so complicated, isn't it? Absolutely. We have so much mixed messaging in the media that it gets, it just gets easier sometimes to bring your head in the sand and just buy McDonald's again. Yes. Oh, so important work. So um, how did you get on this path? My life as a meal planner started when I became a mom. Because before I became a mom, I lived in a hot little apartment on the top floor with no air conditioning. And it was so hot that taper candles would melt and run down along the table edge. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So we basically lived in air conditioned places throughout the year. It didn't matter what season, it was just hot all the time. So I knew how to cook because, you know, I took home ec in junior high. And I cooked a little when I was growing up, but I didn't have the skill set to throw a meal together without thinking about it. And when I became a mom and we moved into a house, uh, I didn't realize that my son would be so sensitive and need me for three hours of nursing at a time or need to be held and rocked and cuddled as much as he did. And so what I was surviving on was cheese and crackers or apple slices or whatever I could get my hands on that didn't require cooking or anything more than one hand to eat. I didn't need cutlery. I couldn't use anything that took time away or that required any sort of... um, implement implements to use like a bowl and a microwave and a spoon it had to be like hand food only yes oh that was just making me remember those days too and people would bring over gifts baby gifts and uh, it would be sleepers and stuff I'd be like no bring me muffins (laughs) why why can I eat while I'm sitting on the couch right (laughs) yeah the best gifts were the ones that I could eat with one hand (laughs) yes absolutely (laughs) I love it so uh As part of the interview, I love to get guests to share a current favorite self-care practice. And the reason I do that is because self-care, there are so many ideas out there. There are so many solutions and I love to give our listeners different ideas or to reinforce what you you might already be doing as a listener. And uh, you might not have thought that it was a self-care practice. You might just have been doing it for whatever reason. And it's nice to know that uh, so much can fall under this broad self-care umbrella. As long as it makes you feel good before, during, or after, then I feel like it's self-care. So Stacey, what's something you love to do for yourself right now? It's funny because my whole life seems to revolve around food and self-care for me is very much food. Um, If I'm, I find that cooking is like therapy for me. Mm -hmm. So the process of chopping the vegetables and, and getting everything prepared for me, just, it settles my mind and it gives me time and space inside my head to kind of process what's happened throughout the day or the week. Mm -hmm. And also the kind of food I eat. I find if I'm eating food that makes my body feel good, I I tend to associate that with self-care. 
I also don't force myself to eat at specific times during the day. I think self-care involves listening to what your body wants when it wants it and listening to what it wants too. So if I really, really want a cup of coffee and a piece of chocolate, I'm not going to be saying no. And if I want, you know, to eat rice and dal for dinner, then I'm going to eat rice and dal for dinner. If I want to have a steak, I'm going to have a steak. I think that allowing myself the freedom to enjoy and savor what I'm eating as I'm eating it is the form of self-care. Absolutely. It brings up so many important points. Um, what do I want to touch on first? Yeah. Like I said before, I think our relationship with food is so damaged. There's just so much information and my experience with food has been following different eating um, styles. I wouldn't say that I go on diets, but I've fall, uh, tried to implement out of curiosity um, different eating styles. And what I found is that it ends up just being a way I can be really hard on myself <laughs> and, and uh, deprive myself and uh, yeah, generally be really hard on myself. And I know other women are in the same boat too. So what you're saying is really valuable wisdom and information to lighten up and enjoy it and know that you don't have to follow rules um, that so many people say are out there in terms of what you eat. 100%. I think that, well, food is, is essential for life. We eat every day. We can't live without food. And forcing ourselves to attach like those rules to the, to the food that we eat and fo focusing on what we can't have or the shame when we inev inevitably fall back into eating those foods we love that they say we can't have. We are so hard on ourselves, like you said. There's a lot of shame and a lot of guilt associated with following those kinds of food rules. I, um, I kind of was borderline anorexic in high school. And so I recognize for myself that once I started following programs that required me to count calories or measure amounts or um, deprive myself of certain food groups, that I would get obsessive about it. And it would, it would be constantly in my head and I would constantly um, beat myself up if I made a poor choice or be trying to focus on all the ways I screwed up instead of enjoying the fact that I'm alive and I get to eat every day. I mean, life is short <laughs> and food can be such a pleasure. It's so such a gift to be able to eat and not just to eat because we have to, but to eat and be able to enjoy it is such a gift to give to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you made me think of a time when I was um, following some plan and we were traveling and so this plan was really not easy to do while traveling and we went to two different restaurants sat down i looked at the menu cried i can't eat anything here and, and so we'd get up and then i would feel embarrassed that we were leaving a restaurant that had all sorts of choices like all the abundance that's available and i can't find anything and we did it twice and i was just emotionally <laughs> exhausted and drained so that plan didn't last for very long. It can't. It can't be maintained. No. It's damaging to ourselves. Absolutely. Not just physically, when you count, consider how many diets recommend or require you to give up entire food groups. Yes. But also mentally and emotionally, it's so damaging. Yeah. I, I have come through that damage, definitely. <laughs> Another time I was eating a piece of chocolate cake because I had done a certain style of eating for the whole week. And then there was one day where you could have cake what you cake. wanted. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I was eating this cake and I noticed that all of my thoughts were around feeling guilty about having this cake. And I thought, this is ridiculous. This cake is so delicious. I'm at a health food store. It's relatively good chocolate cake. It's not from a, um, a fast food place or anything. And, uh, and yet I can't even enjoy it because I feel so guilty. This has to stop. This madness is insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I hear where you're coming from and absolutely there is so much nurturing that we can do with food. So, um, this is not related to, I, I just have another question around it. So for you, why do you think people go for fast food so often and what do you help them move through so that they make healthier choices? That's a really great question. I think that as a society, we are 
consistently overbooking ourselves. We're running from the office to extracurricular activities or sports uh, obligations. If, we are, if you're a parent, there's an awful lot of those. And we're trying to force ourselves to get up earlier, to put more hours in the day, to get everything that has to get done. And then we stay up later than we should because there's too much to get done. And when you get to the end of the day, you are exhausted. Your body's craving something right this second. And you eat fast food because it's convenient. It's available. It satisfies your taste buds because it's so salty. It's got so much fat and sugar. Your body is just it lit up like a firework when you eat it. And it's easy to become dependent on that quick fix. I know <clears throat> when I'm really tired, I just want to eat something right now, you know, because your body is like, I'm tired, wake up, you've got too much to do, find something to eat. And if we're on the road, because so frequently we are, it's so easy to just pull in, grab something, drive away. And so um, my purpose, my mission in life is to help people figure out what their triggers are that get them into that habit and how to move around those triggers. And I really believe no matter what you make at home, it could be anything from chocolate chip cookies to pizza or hamburgers. It's going to be better for you than what you buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about last night where I was at a track meet all day with my kids. It was hot. It was sunny. They worked hard. Well, my daughter worked hard. My son spectated. But I, even as a spectator, I felt like it was a lot of hard work. <laughs> sure, and, and, it is. Yeah. And then by the end of the day, we were on our way home. And our kids love going out for food. We don't do fast food, but we like to go to high quality places. And uh, as I was reading your bio, I saw that you can help people reduce the cost of their food and eating out is definitely more expensive than making it yourself. So both kids were saying, can we go out for dinner? And I thought I would love that. And we have so many great groceries at home and I'm sure we can make something as good as if we went out. And so we did end up making dinner and my son even helped with the entire meal prep because we've made that an expectation for our kids to be involved. And I felt so proud of myself for not giving in to the temptation of taking, like it wasn't that it was hard, but in the moment it was hard to make, to resist that temptation to go out because it would have been easier. Absolutely. I'm super proud of you. <laughs> I've been in that moment and uh, I'm always proud of myself, even in spite of doing this for a living. If I am tempted, so tempted to go out because I'm so tired, but I actually cook like I plan to, yeah. I'm really proud of myself. And I think you have to celebrate that. Absolutely. Yeah, I listened to a call with Jack Canfield recently, and one of his nightly practices is um, acknowledging yourself for what temptations you didn't give into during the day. And that has made a huge difference. Like just to know at the end of the day that I ha I'll be able to say, oh, I didn't give into that temptation. Yay me for, yeah, self-acknowledgement. It's so helpful. So there's a for me, a lot of that happens around food, for sure. Definitely. And that rather than beating yourself up about all the ways you could have done better, it's great to acknowledge all the ways you did well. I think yes. we tend to be really critical on ourselves all the time. Mm-hmm. Yes, there is that critic who, the more, uh, let's see, what's the word I want to use? The more fodder you give for that critic, the more intense it can become. So yeah, there's a lot of courageous self-care that's about shifting your mindset and being powerful in those moments when there is that temptation. Definitely. Well, this has been super interesting so far, Stacey. We're going to pause for a quick uh, commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask Stacey to share a story of courage. So be sure to stick around. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. This is a great part of the interview. I always love hearing people's stories of courage. And one of the reasons I love to incorporate that into the interview is because we are courageous in so many ways. And it's useful, as we were talking about before, to acknowledge that courage. And then also to hear other people's stories and give ourselves permission to say, wow, I did that too. I must be a courageous person or to be in a similar situation and not have known what to do and then be able to say, oh, I, I, now I have a solution. I could try a version of what she did. So courage is contagious, like Brene Brown says, and I love to get that vibe out into the world by hearing and sharing stories of courage. So what have you got for us, Stacey? I don't know if it counts as courageous for a lot of people, but uh, bear with me. It's, it is, of course, it's related to food because that's all I think about. <laughs> 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 to be honest. Um, back several years ago, eight years ago, I was in a really bad car accident. 
And if my husband had put his foot on the gas pedal a fraction of a second harder, I would have been killed because instead of hitting the front corner panel of the passenger side of our car, it would have hit the door and it would have hit me. Wow. And we were hit so hard that we were spun around 180 degrees. So we were facing the opposite direction we were heading. And recovery from that was scary because I had a lot of pain. It didn't have physical, um, obvious signs of being in a lot of pain, but my, I had a concussion that lasted close to six months. And I had so much soft tissue damage that little things like, like walking to the mailbox was a, a huge effort. Mm. And I went to physio for a very long time. And my physiotherapist told me I had to incorporate movement into my life. Um, and I was really scared to hurt myself again. Mm-hmm. So just said, find something that interests you and try it. I'm here. If you hurt yourself, I'll help you, you know, get better. But I ended up, this is not, this is a long lead in. I apologize. No, but, it's good. <laughs> uh, I ended up taking up kickboxing and uh, I'd never done that, but it was really fun. Of course, I injured myself and <laughs> <laughs> threw out my hip uh, because I couldn't get one of the kicks. I still can't. It's really hard to learn something new like that. Mm-hmm. But um, my son up to that point had been watching me and listening to me constantly devalue my body and say things like I'm so fat or I need to lose weight or these clothes are too tight or whatever he heard me say in a negative way about my body. Um, I wasn't doing it and on purpose. It just came out and he happened to be with an earshot. I probably wasn't telling him. I was probably telling my husband or a girlfriend or someone on the phone. And as I was doing these exercises, he would sit in the living room and he'd watch me. And one day he said, as he's watching me try to do this kickboxing thing, I don't think it's working, mom. You're not skinny yet. You should join Jenny Craig. And I realized in that second that I had to take a stand for what I really wanted. Did I want my kids to grow up with body image issues and to be constantly worrying about the food they were eating and counting calories and judging themselves and everyone around them and feeling shame? Because it happens to boys too. It's not just a girl thing. Yeah. Or was I going to start focusing on what it means to be healthy and demonstrating a self-awareness that my body is absolutely perfect, exactly how it is, and that I can take care of it without worrying about what the number on the scale says or what size is sewn into my pants. And so I had, at that second, decided I had to tell him this isn't about getting skinny. It's about getting healthier and recovering from a car accident injury. It's about being strong and about getting capable of movement. And then I had to physically um, tell myself, like out loud, say to myself every morning, I'm doing this to become stronger. And um, as my son got older, he has started internalizing. This. It's so prevalent in the media. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I'm constantly fighting what's mainstream. So when he'll tell me, I'm really hungry, but I think I'm just going to have a glass of water instead. And I have to tell him, you're a teenager. You should eat something. You're probably growing. It, it, you know, he's so self-aware. Um, he's not at all fat, but he's not terribly active either. Mm-hmm. And so I think he's got this idea in his head that if he doesn't eat. If he goes on a quote unquote diet, then he won't gain weight because he's not very active and he has no desire to be terribly active. Uh, It's like a, there's so many messages. And it isn't that he doesn't need to be active. Uh, It's more that he needs to do something he loves to do and he needs to figure out what that is. Yeah. But I have had to over and over tell my kids, you know, if you're healthy, eat something. Or if you're hungry to eat something, you know, don't beat yourself up over an ice cream sandwich, but maybe have an apple next time you're hungry. Just give them the option to know that there is food that they can eat, but they don't have to be judged. Like I will never not have chocolate in my house because chocolate is life and so is coffee. (laughs) (laughs) But that when my kids say, can I have some chocolate? I can say, okay. And not be like, oh, well, just a piece. You don't want to get fat. Like I have to really demonstrate and model it myself Mm -hmm. how to be aware of the food we eat and aware of the words we use when we talk about ourselves. So I don't know if that counts as courageous, but for me to say it out loud and then to own it on Facebook and on my blog was a big deal to say, I don't believe in dieting. I don't believe in restrictions. Um, Exercise is great, but the reason to do it isn't to get skinny. It's to become strong and well. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, Stacey, there are so many levels of courage in there. Absolutely. It's a story of courage. It counts. You get a star for courage. Awesome. Thank you. (laughs) And that's part of the benefit of being on this show too. I've had so many guests 
reflect and say, oh gosh, I didn't know which, if this was courageous or which story to choose. And so that's part of my intention too, is to get this conversation about courage out there and to have people thinking and reflecting on it because absolutely it's courageous. It's courageous to move when it hurts. It's courageous to um, want to change your whole mindset so that your kids are um, receiving the messages you want them to receive. It's courageous to go against mainstream. Absolutely. I'm very familiar with that, <laughs> especially in the parenting world. And it's courageous to express yourself, to disregard what other people think, and to say what's in your heart. So all sorts of courage going on there. Fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so um, you touched on how you help people make better choices, how to meal plan, how to make healthier um, choices at the grocery store. And I know that yours and my experience is not in a little microcosm. This is an epic thing that so many people could use help with. So people are interested in learning more about your work and what you do. Where can they connect with you? They can connect with me on my, is on my um, website. It's www.themealsmaven.com or on Facebook everywhere. My handle is at the meals Maven. That's my business handle. Awesome. And uh, you have a, a gift to offer? I do. I've got an ebook. It's a few recipes that take 15 to 20 minutes to prepare. And so it's sort of kind of thing that you can have on hand when you're, you're running out the door and you just have a few minutes and not a lot of time or energy. And most of the ingredients are in your pantry already. So it'd be good to look through it and kind of confirm you have what's in the book. And then when you need to pull something quick out of your freezer or pantry, you know you've got the ingredients to go with it. Ooh, that sounds awesome. So the link for that uh, gift is in the description for this podcast. I encourage you to access it because really you're going to, if you're in a restaurant, you're going to take at least 15 minutes to get there and figure out where you're going to eat and wait for it. So by that time you could already be eating at home, right? That's right. Yeah. And especially when you go a lot of places, if you don't check your bag, you find out when you get home, you got the wrong order. I don't know. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> that happened a lot when we used to eat out a lot more and then the kids would freak out and your husband would grumble and you'd be disappointed and you'd all be still really hungry. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Just eliminate that situation. 100%. Just yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stacy, thank you so much for taking the time to educate us and to talk about something that I feel like has been buried for a really long time and courageous conversations like this are bringing it out into the open. Uh, I really appreciate the work that you're doing. It's so valuable and thank you for taking the time to share it with us. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure too. That was super fun. And listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. It is definitely a form of courageous self-care to educate yourself, to expand your perception of what self-care is and to hear about other people's experience. So thank you for listening. I encourage you to come back. The podcast airs usually twice a week, one teaching episode for me specifically about courageous self-care and then a guest interview. So do come back and give yourself a big pat on the back and you get a gold star too for practicing courageous self-care today, a big virtual gold star. So yay for you. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to connecting with you again next time. Bye-bye for now.